Great. Thanks, everyone, for coming out to my talk. So my name is Dan Noble. I'm a senior lecturer and future fellow at the Australian National University here in Canberra, Australia. So uh, what I want to overview today uh, very briefly and very quickly is the Orchard package that uh, we developed a couple of years ago. And more specifically, I want to introduce you to version 2.0, which has a number of substantial improvements over 1.0. <clears throat> now, Given the time limitations, I'm not going to live code, but I provided you with a, a vignette of sorts to uh, allow you to move through uh, and understand Orchard's functionality. <clears throat> and I'll post this uh, the link to uh, the link to this vignette uh, on on the the video. But basically, it'll tell you here how to install. Uh, the Orchard Pot package. It'll direct you to the GitHub page, which is hosting it because uh, it's currently not on CRAN. And it just sort of emphasizes the need to make sure that you have an updated version of R because uh, it'll play, uh, it'll need, it'll be needed to play well with the EM means package for Orchard to work. Okay. <clears throat> So what are orchard plots? So orchard plots are uh, plots of meta regression models. They're force like plots, uh, to so to say. And they're specifically interested in predicting the meta analytic mean within levels of a particular moderator in a meta regression or multi-level meta regression model. So just to give you an idea of what orchard plots are, I'll introduce you to this uh, uh, LIM data set, which comes with orchard. <clears throat> and uh, this is a study done by uh, Nat Lim, Al Senior, and Shinichi Nakagawa, uh, looking at the correlation between uh, offspring number and size and uh, mother size offspring uh, trade-offs. So we can fit a meta regression model normally uh, using the metaphor package and its rma.mb uh, function. Orchard requires you fit meta regression models with metaphor objects. It only takes metaphor objects, so you'll need to uh, use metaphor, but that's okay because metaphor is an incredibly versatile, flexible, and very powerful meta-analysis package. <clears throat> um, so if you fit that model and we're interested in trying to predict the meta like mean across uh, different phyla, you can generate an orchard plot quite easily by basically feeding in uh, the model itself along with the specification of the mod argument, which tells Orchard Plot which moderator you want to plot. You feed it the data and a group. The group is needed to specify <clears throat> the uh, sample size uh, for the groups within the brackets here. So this could be study often, and that can differentiate between K, which is the total number of effects. <clears throat> so from that, there, there are a whole bunch of different uh, options here. You can transform it if it's a correlation coefficient or ZR to a correlation coefficient, which is what's being done here. You've also got colorblind friendly plotting options, which case, because we have so many levels I've suppressed here. And what you get then uh, is a nice orchard plot, which depicts the meta analytic mean, these dots here, they're 95% confidence interval and the 95% prediction interval along with the raw data in each one of these levels of phyla. These data are weighted by their sample size in this particular instance, but it could be precision. Um, it just depends on what you're <clears throat> interested in plotting. Now, one of the nice features is the ability to subset. So you'll notice here, there is a lot of data a lot of levels where there's very little data where we can get around that because the EM means package allows us to make predictions at certain levels. <clears throat> and so what I want to show you here is how you can subset the data to certain levels and also how you can use another function called mod results to capture the model output in a table, which can be useful for pub publications. So another way to specify this is using the mod results. And here, Mod results takes the exact same arguments <clears throat> that Orchard Plot does on its own. But here, for this particular situation, it will capture the, the model results in a table. Again, we'll feed in the phylum uh, information, but this time we have a new argument called at, and this allows us to make predictions at particular levels of moderators in the model. In this case, we want Chordata, Anthropoda, and Mollusca, because those are the levels where we have most of the data. <clears throat> and not only then do we get a limb 
MR results as a table, we can feed that into orchard plots to generate the uh, orchard plot itself, where we have the meta-link means and uh, confidence and prediction intervals for each one of the levels where we have sufficient amount of data. Of course, uh, you can then use this mod table, which is held in the uh, LIM MR results object to produce a nice table of those mean estimates and confidence intervals. <clears throat> now, often when we have meta-regression models, we're interested in plotting continuous variables. This is less common in meta-analysis, but still reasonably common if you think about requiring uh, or looking at publication biases like uh, time lag bias when you're interested in year. And uh, we can easily capture that using the bubble plot arc, uh, function. Bubble plots then allow you to, they take the, again, the same arguments, but they allow you to plot a continuous predict a moderator in this case year. Um, and you can have an interaction with other different categorical levels to understand how those those uh, moderators vary within those categories uh, differently. So this is just an example of an orchard plot. And again, we've we've effectively just feed it in the same sort of arguments that orchard plot takes. <clears throat> now, uh, orchard's great because when we rely on the EM means package, it means that instead of a single moderator, uh, multi-level meta regression model, we can take multi-moderator regression levels and we can basically marginalize means across different levels of other moderators. So for example, if we turn to a different data set, this is a fish data set um, from Odea et al, uh, which was published in 2019. They fit much more complicated uh, meta regression models where they've got uh, different trait types with varying degree uh, Celsius differences between treatments and different experimental designs. So here we can just fit all those moderators in this meta regression um, here, and you can see it can get quite complicated. This is the output from that model. Um, but what we can do here is because we have those at and by arguments built into orchard plot, we can basically set the uh, predictions up so that we predict, say, at 5, 10, and 15 degrees Celsius differences between the treatments. And uh, we can then marginalize over all the other elements or moderators that are in that model. Okay. And so this is basically a, an example of the kind of orchard plot you'd get where you're predicting <clears throat> difference, the degree differences. So if you've got a 5 or 15 degrees Celsius difference between your two treatments, uh, what would be the anticipated uh, change in effect size magnitude uh, in each of the different trait categories. <clears throat> now, one thing <clears throat> that you'll notice often in meta-analysis, particularly with subgroups, is that the variability in those subgroups can vary quite a bit. And this violates the uh, homogeneity of variance assumption we can actually relax that in metaphor models. Metaphor has a great op option here by including a, uh, <clears throat> a category or moderator within the uh, random effects, which allows us to estimate um, depending on what level. Uh, in this case, it's a, res a different residual variance across the different trait levels. And again, we can feed that model in and here it will then recognize that this is a heterogeneous variance model and it'll plot variances differently across the groups depending on what the best estimate of variability is uh, in those groups itself. <clears throat> now that's just a brief introduction to the package. Obviously I don't have a lot of time in 10 minutes, um, but there are a number of other features like I squared and R squared functions that allow you to calculate um, both point estimates and bootstrap estimates of I squared and R squared, as well as submerge function, which allows us to take different mod results objects and merge them together to create a single orchard plot um, as well. If you want to find out more, check out the vignette, which goes through quite a lot of detail. And I'm happy to take any kind of questions um, you might have about Orchard 2.0. Um, on that note, thanks for listening and hope you find it useful.